Wir dürfen dieses Jahr dürfen wir einen Family Preis überreichen. Das macht uns sehr glücklich, weil uns ist die Verbundenheit zu der Familie sehr, sehr wichtig. Nora de Vichier durfte aus all den Projekten ihren Lieblingspreis auswählen. Und da freuen wir uns natürlich jetzt sehr darauf, den präsentieren zu dürfen. Okay. Danke. So, das Projekt, das Nora ausgewählt hat, ist Flyability. Und uh, may I ask you, Patrick, to step forward? So, this is it. Hello, everybody. Um, so, as you've seen, we are Flyability, a company, a young company, spin-off from EPFL, and active in the world of drones. So, drones has been a huge hype lately. You probably have seen some or bought some for your kids, for yourselves. It's a billion-dollar industry. Uh, but more importantly, it's also becoming uh, a work tool for more and more professionals. Uh, when we're talking with large industrials uh, uh, across the world, whether it is uh, oil company, energy companies, uh, steel mills, they all have teams working on integrating drones into their workflow. Um, it's, it's saving already billions of dollars per year by using them for inspection instead of using humans. But there's one big problem, and it is the biggest challenge right now in flying robotics is how can we have a device which is safe, so which will not hurt humans, which will not damage the structures that it's inspecting, and a device that is able to navigate in difficult environments where you have obstacles, where you might touch a wall, and a regular drone, if it touches the wall, it's, it's, it crashes and it's broken. So that's, that's exactly the, the problem that we're solving at Flyability. And let me take a very meaningful example to show you what is um, our motivation. We all remember Fukushima in 2011, which was one of the best test cases for robotics all around the world, because it was a highly dangerous place where typically humans could not be sent, and we needed to get information from the inside. So what happens is um, that ground robots were sent. Unfortunately, there was, there was a lot of clutter. It was, uh, uh, there were explosions and there were a lot of debris on the floor. So the ground robots got stuck and could not enter to the relevant place to gather information. The second step then was to send flying robots. But flying robots, as I said, in an unstructured environment, they're not good at all. They are only made to fly outdoors, far from obstacle, under GPS coverage, and not at all to fly indoors, close to obstacles. So, actually, there was no way to get the relevant information needed from the Fukushima power plant. And that's why we developed uh, our flying robot gimbal here. It's a uh, robot with a decoupled cage around it, which shields it from, from collisions, and at the same time, makes it so that the impact does not uh, have any, any influence on the inside of the robot, but only on the protective cage. It thus has the agility of the helicopter, but at the same time, it has the safety and the ability to navigate close to things that a balloon or a football has. So it allows it to navigate in places where no other robot has been able to go before. It can roll on the floor, on the surfaces, on the ceilings, it can navigate close to people, close to any type of object with absolutely no risk for the people around and for the object. In addition to being active in, in catastrophe situations like Fukushima, our biggest market is actually prevention. Is how can we help the industrials inspect their places, uh, which are dangerous for humans, without uh, uh, faster and without uh, and by decreasing those risks. For instance, we've been working uh, in uh, road inspection, bridge inspection in particular. Whereas right now we're using bucket trucks driving on the top of the bridge and with a bucket going underneath and employees spending weeks doing those inspections. Or we use people with ropes hanging below those bridges over the river. Uh, companies don't like that too much. 
and flying a robot uh, under the bridge is uh, saving a few hundred million dollars per year uh, for a country like, uh, uh, like uh, Japan where we are active. <coughs> Another example is tanker ships. Tanker ships, uh, they're worth uh, a lot of money. Uh, their inspection is really critical. We all remember from the dramatic consequences of failures in uh, tanker ships. Well, right now, some of the tanks that we see here are not inspected because it's so expensive to bring a robotic arm in there to perform the inspection that even if the risks are high, there's, there, it's not, it's not uh, uh, the cost-benefit analysis tells you not to inspect it. Well, with this type of robot, we can perform this inspection in a few minutes and dramatically increase the safety. So that's why uh, we're having a lot of traction right now. We are uh, we're selling our first units uh, at the moment. We started two weeks ago to ship the first beta prototypes to large industrials. And uh, we hope to be hitting the market on a more broad commercial way uh, by, the, uh, by the end of the year. Now, what's for the future? Um, a robot that is able to navigate close to people and inside the cities is basically the robot that will give the answer to uh, all the amazing uh, dreams we have about the future of robotics, of delivering your package at home, of uh, being able to, um, to, to, to interact with people and to give service to the population. Uh, so this is what we are doing at Flyability and the bringing girls close to people and uh, inside the cities. Thank you uh, very much for your attention. on behalf of the family to thank you all for coming today and for supporting the foundation. Uh, it's very important to us. The 2015 De Vigia Family Prize uh, goes to flyability. Uh, Twelve years ago, when Bill was still alive, uh, we'd never seen a drone. And uh, now you see all these young entrepreneurs pushing the boundaries of the known and uh, creating the economy of tomorrow. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, the, prize, the family prize is in recognition uh, of our great enthusiasm for the wonderful idea of bills to support young people as they start out in their business life. <laughs> 